that up to him. <coughs> okay, it's bad.
Okay, key. Stand up. Eyes back. Heel. Stand up. All right, so you're just engaging our shoulders, but I want you to relax them. So no tension. So it's 10 slow. Have that breath. Start the technique, okay? It's not like you're back here and you're punching and you're like, oh, I wonder where my hand's gonna go. The tension's already there. You've already made contact. The breath is releasing the technique. Does that make sense as an idea? You don't want to push your punch. You don't want to push your punch. You want to have it done, and you just release it. It's two different feelings. Okay? So it's like you're, you're letting go of that contraction as opposed to contracting and loading and then, and then go. Okay, ready? Slow at first. Itch. Knee. So on. Chi. Higher belts, think vibration. Go. Hook. Seach. Punch. Ku. Ju. Jodas. Itch. Knee. So on. Chi. Go. I'm starting my technique. I'm starting my front kick. What's the first thing I should do? Core the leg. Core the leg. Anything different? You should do those at the same time. So when we were doing timing with Sensei Abio, if you guys remember, we're doing half techniques. When we're counting with reverse punch, it feels pretty okay. You guys agree? It feels pretty interesting. But then we start countering the kicks, and you're like, okay, why am I five years behind this guy? And it's because, I know, personally for me, you think about doing all this stuff, and think about kicking with the leg. It's just a bad thing. But there's all this extra action that's happening. So the first thing to go should just be the body. So you're kicking from the hip, and everything else is to kind of take care of itself, at least at a certain level. Okay? So think the hip starts, then the technique follows. Not coil and then whoop. Just think hip, hip, hip goes first. Okay? So that's gonna speed up your kick. So think just the hip. Us? Us. Just the hip. Ready? Now complete the kick. I'm not saying don't do the kick, but just say this goes before everything else. Ready? Itch. Knee. <laughs> don't go too crazy if your hamstring just don't warm up. So. G. Go. Rope. Seach. Touch. Goo. Ju. Itch. Knee. So. Chi. Go. Nope. Seach. Touch. Goo. Ju. Yeah. What should my body be doing when I'm doing a front kick? I should get someone. Um, Nate. <laughs> Space this way. Front stance. And, uh, Three, three. Itch. 
B. So, okay, you guys think about that migration. He probably could fall back. Good. Hmm? He could fall back. He could fall back? He's leaning really, really good. Okay, anybody agree with that? I think the way it's more, he's throwing his hips to make his body go back. Throwing his hips to make his body go back. I mean, like, not, where it's just like, upper body is leaning, mm -hmm. just for the sake of it leaning, but like, he's speaking. He's like, I mean, just, just go forward, which kind of makes the C shape in the back. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Ideally, what should be happening with the body on front kick? A lot of question, I know. Hips, hips and head. Should my head be going back when I'm kicking? Should my hips be going forward when I'm kicking? Or the hips and the head go back when I'm kicking? Should the whole body be going forward? Should the whole body be going back? Like what, what should you be doing? The whole back of the hips will go forward. You cannot have your head down. If your head down, you lose balance. You want to go backwards. If you are pushing, when you kick, you go backwards. So that's why your whole body goes towards the target. Yeah, so everything needs to be going forward. So if you're using all your hip and you have to lunge a bit, that's fine because your head's not going to, you know, you can't lunge around with your head, right? But if you move your head too much, basically if it's behind my base foot, I got to, see how it's behind? Then I got a problem. Um, when I'm, if I'm lunging, my head should still be over my base foot. Okay? Because when I, whenever I hit something, where does the left shot go? It goes back into my body, right? And where does it go? Ideally to the floor, if my balance is in a way that I'm past my, my base foot, what's going to happen? Shoulders. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fall down or go somewhere else. I want all that energy to get redirected into the floor. This, and you guys know this is when you have the little kids kick the back, they go doing, doing, and they bounce off. It's because there, there's no, nothing's going to the floor. Does that make sense? No. Okay, just three more. Okay, so keep an eye on the relation to the head and the base foot. Okay. Is that? It's going back so much up awards, not onward. It's it's amazing, it's super fast. But look, your kick is it would be great to hit someone's uh, chin, yes. but not necessarily someone's belly. So think about yeah, that's more. So when you made a correction to keep his body straight, which you did, and all of a sudden the kicks lost a lot of its own, right? So you have to try to marry the two. Yes. Right, sorry. <laughs> but if no. that might get a piece of one chain, it's done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So when, <clears throat> whenever, they, like, whenever they teach my Gary, we have you know, big classes of students, it's over motion is used a lot. I'll stop talking in a second, but over motion is used a lot. And over motion is, I'm trying to illustrate this example. Since I've this a lot, use the hip, use the hip. You don't actually kick like that, but they're trying to get people to understand you gotta use the hip. But then people took it literally. It's like, okay, great. Boom! Like, I'm using my hip now, but now everything's kind of, right? The higher you get, you wanna take that big action and make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Does that make sense? Kind of like the stances. Same amount of energy to the floor, but smaller and smaller and more subtle. Okay? So let's just face the mirror. Get your own spot. Stand up. Actually, let's go this way. That'd be a little easier. Let's go this way. Yep. So we'll go down and back. So uh, face that way. Okay. Yeah. When we come on the set. And just stagger. The idea is you can see yourself in the mirror. Where everybody is. Yeah. So just kind of stagger where we need to go. We'll be going this way so you can see how, if you're going this way, maybe you just want to take us. So front kick. See where as I'm kicking, so hard from those kick. Bang. Everyone wants to take a look in the mirror as he kicks. Bang. Bang. Just kind of, you can kind of check yourself. Boom. Bang. Just see where everything's at. Yeah. Don't mess up your hair. Okay, let's go ahead. Go.
car, you can see those low. Maybe you can see how much of the kit you can do. That's actually a giant range. Somebody's dragging the belt. You want to see the max range. Because uh, appropriate reception is when you can like see things and like you can't see them. I'm not sure what the, the verbiage is for. You know the length of your, your technique. But you want to get to the point where like I know I can punch and not hit them. But I know I'm like, oh, it's not a little different reception. Yeah, what you're doing Yeah, he sees it, but it's too late. Just piss. 
temporary <laughs> power. But since Abby told me this, I was like, okay, it's like twice as fast. Okay, that's just a little short plunging. Is 
spend 10% of time blocking, 90% of, okay, that's where you want. Now, yes.
Crazy Nathan kicks and stuff? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hassan kicks. Right, exactly. Hassan kicks. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, kicks the head or, you know, just like do whatever they want with the feet. In my opinion, one man's point of view, I think you should either be able to kick to the head or be able <coughs> to have an excellent defense against the kick to the head. You should be able to catch it and sweep it. That's my opinion. My okay? If you just don't have, if you don't have either, then what do you do with a kick to the head? I mean, you know? So you want to give, you want to kind of threaten them. Okay, so that's something to work towards because we don't practice catching kicks, so we'll start working on it a little more. But um, if you want to catch a kick, let's say, uh, or you just you're kicking and block, block you. This guy does a kick. The worst thing to do is actually hit the kick with your hand. Okay? So three and a half times the weight average, on average, your legs are than, than your arms. About three and a half times. Okay, that's a lot of muscle. It's a lot of strong bone. Right? You don't want to be messing with someone's, like, if his, shin, <clears throat> if his shin bone's coming in, I don't want to have my little fingers trying to block all that shot. Especially, this has happened many times, slowly. Try to block, you try to block a kick. You try to get inside, uh, but you miss it, and I'm you go bad. here. Uh, and then your fingers are jammed. Like, these have been jammed, I don't know how many times. Same. Okay? So, you know, when we say, try it like this, you're not going to jam a finger doing that. It's not going to feel good, but you're not going to you know, probably break a fist. You're breaking fingers for sure. Okay? So, if you fight like this, this is how I fight. I'm just saying, this is a gamble, and you have to know that you're okay with breaking your fingers sometimes. Just put that out there. Okay? So, don't block the kick. Okay? This guy kicks. Let the kick go past, and then go in and attack. Okay? That's the first step. Second step, he does um, uh, Mr. Randolph's. I want to come in and grab the kick. I want to come in and, and, and attack that kick. Okay? But there's a certain rate. If I'm too late, if I'm too late to get that kick, then I'm getting hit. Okay? It's kind of like going to and son of son. What's easier? Going to send, because you don't have to worry about what the technique is if you're out of the distance. Send of sen, if your time is a little off, you've got to be very aware of what technique's coming. Okay? 
So when you're dealing with kicks, don't. Don't, don't touch them, OK? Let them kick and then punish all that extra stuff when they're up in the air and they're recoiling back. Does that make sense? Awesome. OK. Now, sometimes, you know, <clears throat> like I find myself when doing kumite, I'll just kind of tap. I'll just tap the kick, just kind of be aware of it to keep myself centered. OK, because I, I don't want you to do this, though. You know? Awesome. Let's say you did this like a round up, if you're done. Oh, I'll, I'll find myself just kind of touching. But it's touching. I'm more or less, it's kind of like um, you're in kumai. Don't move. Like when, it, when it's, there's kawashi and then there's kind of touching. Cynthia Barry talks about this like in UFC, touching. You're kind of getting a feel of where his energy's at. Like if this guy's going forward, he's I can touch, I get to feel immediately. I can close, like, make sure I can hit your hand. But if I close my eye, you can feel like where his attention's at. Okay, that's all you're doing. You're not fighting. He does a kick. I'm not fighting it because I'm not going to win that ever. Does, does that make sense? Yes. Questions on this? Yeah. So the, I don't know if you guys the suppression block. Hmm? Not formally, but. Yeah. But I mean, like, so it, it feels a lot like touching the kick. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So suppression block, um, you typically don't do it with front kick because of the angle of front kick. <laughs> so um, the reason it doesn't come up a lot is because it's <clears throat> typically designed for like side thrust kicks and back kicks. Side thrust kick isn't used very often in Kumite. Because side thrust kick, the angle, what's the angle of side thrust kick? Like uh, front kick, you kind of have a little hook up, right? What's the angle of side thrust kick? Down. It's slightly down, right? Or it's straight and slightly down. So this guy does thrust kick, I just press it down. Boom. Um. Okay? Front kick, you're not going to want to suppress that because it's kind of coming up. So he does the kick. And it comes, uh, it's hard to kind of fight that. It's because you're, you're actually trying to fight his force, force on force, right? This is more of a redirection. And you can do it for back kick too. He does a back kick. Bang, pressure in the bank. But again, like I know my front kick kind of angles up a bit. So it's kind of, you know. Ideally, you want to have a block that, like what you guys are doing over here. Go to the side, get off the energy line, and just attack. It's supposed to stay on the line and kind of yeah, attack it from there. So it has its benefits, but typically there's a, if you could sit down and like write a theory, what's, what's the best option? Suppression block's not going to be the first one. Okay. Does that answer your question? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, as long as you're, <coughs> you're just moving it. You're deflecting. Suppression block is just a de deflection block. Yeah. Okay. But you don't want a suppression block this way. You have to slow. I don't want to move off the energy line. Suppression block. Okay. Typically, you stay on. So you stay in the center. Bang! You attack from here. So there's benefits because you can attack immediately, but you're also in his line. So questions? Okay. Did we switch sides yet? Yes, we have. Okay, so everybody, uh, the Kitsky, so grab partner again. <coughs> have your whip. Okay. Land, land, stuff, that's it. All right, partner. Yes. Rotate to the left. Left, left. That one, that would be Okay. Okay. And come on. Alright. Um, let's have you guys just switch places and just rotate to your own different sides of the line. Which foot's most important? Back or front? Who thinks? 
Well, the French one's pretty good. Because they expect it. There's the thing in there. So, if I'm doing jab reverse punch, boom, boom, I move both my feet. So, if I don't move anything, I stay in the spot. If I move my back foot half step, I can get to here. If I move my back foot in front of my front foot, I have a huge distance I can cover. So it's with that, it's with that back foot. That's why timing the jab of the back foot so effective because he's like, oh, look at my hand. And then I sneak the stick step and I have so much more to go. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you want to do that combination, that's just, that's just an example. Okay? Any combination, any defense. Let's go!
reversal then. So maybe it's kind of like more when you misjudge the distance, now yeah. you're super close to his punch. Yeah. But you don't want to be aware at all. If he starts to turn the whole combination, that's me. And now he's an Alex. If I'm open here, that's good. Right. You go out of the Throughout the whole kata. Legs open. Whenever you have to move your weight, you're going to be slow. So keep this position so you don't have to move your weight as much. First time slow, second time normal speed.
Your stances have improved like a good amount, you know. Typically your stances are all over the place and you're doing a lot of extra moves, so you're making less moves, which is good. Um, uh, first sequence again. Very first sequence. Go. Okay. Chew down, chew down. Chew down. Yeah. Next one. So that's slow. Bang. Right, um, <coughs> it 
have your feet going like first. You're gonna, if you're going to have something go first, have the feet go first. Then tie the hand together. You don't want to have the hand go and then put the kind of drag in behind. Okay? I'd rather be in this position and not be finished than in this position and have my body like that. You know? So just go to this move. Let's continue from there. Bang. Itch. Knee. Bang. Bump. Go. Yes. Relax, relax. Here, you feel strong? No, you're way past your center. Here, you feel stronger than you were over there? Yes. This is, this is the edge. Like so? And don't move your head. Try it again. Try to help. Go. Ooh, that was better, yes. <coughs> you got you. Okay. <coughs> Knees. Go back. <coughs> just, do the, just do the next move. So you're here. Do the next move and stop. Good. You want to look where you're going. Earlier you did this. Now you're thinking about the second move already. What if the guy had moved? So, BAM! And then, then you can switch your eyes. Hey! Can you get lower in that stance? Yeah, so when you, when you land the jump, you go as low as you can with your back straight. So this is too much. Go as low as you can with your back straight. stance should this be? Front, front stance, right? Is that a front stance? Do you want your feet? You want, so is front stance inline or shoulder width? There you go. Okay, next one. Next one. Yeah, so you're here, so you're front stance, and then you go to back, you switch to the back stance. Bring the foot back. Go back one. Bring the don't move the back foot. Just bring the front foot to the back. Foot. Bring the front foot to the back. Foot. You brought the back foot to the front. Foot. Bring the front foot back. Front foot back. And then you pivot. And then pivot. We'll see. Go back. What stance? What stance is that supposed to be? Let's see if you know. Front stance. So get into front stance. Front stance inline or shoulder width? Wait, inline. So we punch like this. Shoulder width. Knee. Okay, so in the last few moves that go down. So, front stance. Front stance, back stance. Then front stance, back stance. Front stance, back stance. You have, to, you have to clearly define your stances. If you're ambiguous, that's what the judges are looking for. You know? You could lose just because the stance is wrong. So that should be like priority number one. Okay? Yes. Yes. Back. That's it. <clears throat> you know, the majority of the catalogue don't change. Just Focus on know exactly what stance you're doing.
feel like a weight's kind of going this way. You feel that? Uh, let's go to the first one. Let's go to this, this first one. Go. Um, don't bring it all the way back. So you have to maintain the pressure throughout the cut. Push against my hands. There's a transition I got. Switch. Push on the other side. Continue. I don't just move my hands freely. Through the center. Come back. Through the center. Don't come down and then come back. Okay? Okay. okay. Um, relax your shoulders. You have really good body snap, but you're, you're engaging. This is too much. Too much. Um, see, Fabio. Do you watch anybody for MP? Like, is there a sense that you watch like on, online or anything? Maybe there used to be, but it's just a knee. Right? It's not perfect. Yeah, I was wondering because some people do kick and some people don't. In this dojo? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, so you punch. Bang, bang! Kata that you know that you've done the least. How do you know that you've done the least? That's what you're going to cool down with. So everybody spread out. Spread out, get your own face. Whenever you've done the least, you face the mirror, just walk through it slow. On your own
So yeah. Show me. Right. Sensei. something from Sensei Nishiyama and um, what hit me hard was, uh, you know, with karate, everything's inside of you already, you just have to get to it. You know, like your ideal punch, your ideal how you're supposed to move, like, you know, there's no equipment to buy, it's, it's in there. So, when you're doing kihon, because everybody loves to hate kihon, think of that diamond that you're trying to find. You're, with your keyhole, you're just chipping away at the, all that rock and all that stuff around it. Okay? If you think of keyhole as like a chore, you know, your cry is not going to get better. If you think that you're getting closer and closer to that ideal 
position that you think you should be in, you know, there's a little more, little more meaning. So, I thought that was interesting. Thank you, guys. Oh,